Hello super user. So if you are on macOS Catalina and you use JW plugins, you've probably seen this error message before. And if you have not yet upgraded to Catalina, you will probably see this error message in the future. So in this video, we're going to go over how to fix this infamous developer cannot be verified error, why this happens at all, and why doesn't Finale just fix this? So we're going to go over to all those details, but for those of you who don't care why this happens, let's just get into how you fix this. So I just downloaded JWTie to show you how this works and then just opened up Finale and this is the error message that popped up. So to fix this, we first want to hit cancel. We don't want to move the file to trash. And we want to go to our system preferences. Because once you open up Finale and you get the error message, you'll notice under security and privacy than general you will see this error message that basically says that the JW plugin was blocked from use because it is not from an identified developer. You want to click allow anyway and then enter your administrator username and password. And once you do that you'll notice that it went away. Now to update Finale let's just close out of it and then reopen it again. You should now see this error message. A verified developer, are you really sure you want to open it? And yes, hit open. And then Finale will load up again. And if you go to plugins, JW plugins, or wherever you installed it, you should now see JW tie notes or whatever plugin you're having an issue with. So that's how you fix the error, but why does this actually happen? Well, it's actually a security and privacy solution to one of the largest security uh, problems with most computer because malicious apps can actually harm your computer. The thing that a lot of people don't know is that the largest security flaw in any of these computers is actually human error, whether we like it or not. Uh, and in the IT business, they actually have a name for this called PEBCAC, Problem Exists Between Computer and Chair. That is a bit passive aggressive, but this is just how it works. And so Apple wants to prevent you from doing stupid things and downloading stupid apps. Now, I'm not going to make any sort of value judgment on whether Apple is doing the right thing. I'm just going to walk you through their line of reasoning and how it works, and you can make the judgment on your own of whether this is actually a good thing. And so this stems from one of the most common misconceptions about Mac computers, and it is that Mac OS has less malware than Windows, so it is safer. And that's actually not the case. Like I said before, the largest security flaw in these computers is actually human error. And so the solution for that that Apple came up with is Gatekeeper. Again, I'm not making a value judgment of whether this is a good thing or not. This is just what it is. And so the way Mac OS works is that it assumes every app is malicious unless it is from an identified developer. And what an identified developer tells Apple is that, yes, this application is actually safe to run and that it will not harm your computer. Now you can override the setting and that's actually what we did to get rid of the error message and to get the application to run. And what this does is it creates an exception. So every time you boot up some sort of application or plugin, Mac OS will actually still look to see A, is it from an identified developer? And B, is it on the exceptions list? So all we did when we said, yes, I still want to open it, yes, I really do still want to open it, is we just added it as an exception. Now, a common misconception I've seen on a lot of the forums, uh, including the Finale Power Users Forum, the Finale Forum, uh, the Make Music Help Desk Forum, uh, is that this is somewhat of a random process, that only some people have this issue, and that it is based on some sort of underlying architecture that we don't know. That's actually not quite the case. So in previous versions of Mac OS, you had different settings that you can change to tell the computer how exactly you want to deal with applications. So this is what the menu used to look like. And as you can see, there was a only allow apps from the App Store, only allow apps from the App Store and unidentified developers, or allow apps from literally anywhere. And starting three or four different versions of Mac OS ago, when they first added this feature, Anywhere was the default option. So several versions ago, you could download apps and JW plugins and you would see absolutely no error message. And then, I believe it was in Mojave, they switched over to only allowing apps from the App Store and identified developers. And that became the new default. But you could still have it on anywhere. 
and if you change the setting over or if the computer by default changes the setting from anywhere to only identify developers, it would still allow current applications that you've already run to run because it assumed that you trusted it. However, starting with Catalina, they did something different. So Catalina blocks all apps unless there is an exception. Whereas Mojave just assumed that you trusted it if you already ran it, it never actually created that exception. In Catalina, even if you used them before, it would then still bring up the error message saying that this plugin is from an unidentified developer, you should not open it or run it. And odds are, before, if you had the uh, Anywhere checkbox checked on, you never even saw that error message. So when it, Catalina came up and it seemed like your entire workflow broke down, that's why. It's just a change in the software. Uh, and so now the next question is, why doesn't Finale just fix it? Well, the main reason is actually it's not Finale's fault. In fact, Finale is marked as an app from an identified developer. It's really a macOS issue because an app must be signed by an identified developer and Apple must notarize it. So how exactly do you become an identified developer? Well, you have to join the Apple Developer Program, which costs $99 a year, and that will give you basically a virtual signature to sign your app, and then Apple to approve that, yes, this is not malicious, then signs it and they just call it notarizing it. And so the way that this would have to be fixed is for Yari to actually go through this process it may sound simple from what I've said, but there's actually many, many more steps. And Yari would have to go through all these steps with every single plugin he's created. And it wouldn't fix any JDB plugins that you already have downloaded. It would only fix them if you downloaded new plugins. So I totally understand why Yari hasn't fixed this yet. And I understand personally if Yari doesn't fix this. Now, there is one more way to fix this on your machine. That way you never have this problem again. I personally don't recommend it because it does make your computer more vulnerable to malicious applications. As well as if you don't understand terminal, then it's probably not a good idea to type this into your computer. So it is a two-step process, which is fairly simple if you really want to do this. You just type in sudo uh, spectacle dash dash master dash disable into terminal. You will have to authenticate it as you normally do with sudo. And then in your system preferences, you'll now see the option for anywhere, just enable it. Again, I don't recommend this because it also allows any apps, not just JDB plugins, including malicious ones. But if you decide to do it, it's your computer and you have every right to disable it. So I hope that cleared up some uh, areas of confusions about the unidentified developer issue with JW plugins. If you still have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And you may have a slightly different process than what I walked you through to fix it because it depends on your previous settings, how long you've used the plugins, and several other things. It might show you a slightly different route of solving the problem. But the end result is going to be a very similar path. So as always, if you found this video helpful, make sure to hit a like button so I know you want more content just like this. And each week I post new videos about how to use Finale to its fullest. So if you don't want to miss out on any of those videos, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you get notified every time a new video comes out.